All right, everyone, we're going to get ourselves started here. So uh, welcome, everyone, to today's webinar. Uh, we are going to be discussing the modern phone system and how they work. My name is Kurt Pontello, and I will be your presenter for today's webinar. If you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to post them in the meeting chat section, and we will do our best to answer those at the end of the presentation. Please note today's webinar is being recorded, and we will send out a link later to the recording. To first understand the modern telephone system, we need to understand um, you know, what options are available to us as consumers. So our agenda for today's webinar is we're going to be discussing the different types of connections that are available to us and how they interact with the modern telephone system. I thought this statement was so true. Connectivity is productivity, whether it's in a modern office or in an undeveloped village. So the three things that we're going to be discussing today um, as far as connectivity is concerned is going to be POTS telephone lines, PRI, and SIP trunking. So the first one I'd like to start with is good old POTS lines, right? So POTS lines is short for plain old telephone service and refers to a standard landline telephone service that has been in place for many decades. We typically see these in small businesses. Um, they only have a few telephones, a few telephone lines that are needed. And a good example of this would be a small doctor's office. Um, this week, actually, I went to an appointment um, earlier, and I noticed that the customer had seven POTS lines and an older uh, digital telephone system. These older systems use POTS lines and are referred to as keyed systems. Uh, these systems have, like, line one, line two, uh, so on and so forth, um, and they use a feature called rollover. So if line one is busy, it rolls over to the second one, to the third one, so forth. Um, but if you guys are familiar with these, maybe you'll see them in an office, but it has line one, two, three. So these are kind of the older systems, but they use those pop lines to support it. So, um, but what we did notice when we sat down with the customer and we had a chance to look at their telephone bill, we noticed they were paying roughly $40 per telephone line, which is expensive. Um, the reason for these lines being expensive is the traditional copper infrastructure is being phased out um, by the carriers uh, because the cost to maintain that infrastructure is becoming very expensive to them. So some other common things that we see fax machines are one that you still use pop lines. So I'm sure we're all familiar with the old fax machine that we see in the office. Um, but, uh, you know, fax machines are kind of getting phased out as well. Those are going to the new eFax solution. So um, the easy way to think about eFax is you just go to a web page. Um, you can pose it just like you would an email. So you attach your document, and instead of typing in an email address, you're actually just going to type in a telephone number. Um, you send it, away it goes, um, easy to do, and uh, much more cost effective than those old traditional copper telephone lines as well. Um, a couple other things that we'll, we'll see that use POTS lines in our industry is going to be alarm lines. Um, so, um, you know, the nice thing about using a copper line for an alarm line, for instance, is it gets its power from the local central office. So let's say, for instance, the power was cut to the building or we lost power to the building. Um, that telephone line that comes into the business still has um, power going to it. So, um, you know, somebody tries to break in, those kind of things, the alarm's still going to go off, those kind of things. Um, but we've also seen a switch from those now going to the cellular networks, right? So, um, you know, they use a cellular connection, um, they use a universal power supply for a backup and able to support it. Um, the last one we see commonly is going to be those elevators. And the same kind of rules applies that it does for the alarm lines as elevators. They're making the switch to those, um, to cellular um, and with having a power backup on site. So that's a little bit about POP lines, common uses that we see for them. Um, hopefully you have a basic understanding, but it's old traditional uh, cables that come into our business that provide us dial tone at the end of the day is what a POP line is. The next one is a um, product called PRI. So what does PRI mean, right? A PRI stands for Primary Rate Interface and is a standard for providing telecommunication services to enterprises and offices. To, simply, uh, to simplify this for you, uh, it uses dedicated lines uh, that come into your business that deliver voice only on a single connection. So where do we see these? We typically see these in businesses with 30 plus phone users and a system that is roughly 10, 5, 15 years old, something like that. And a PRI provides 23 channels on a single circuit. 
An added benefit to a PRI, though, is the feature that is called direct inward dialing. So I don't know if you've ever heard of the phrase DID, for instance. Um, the good way to think about a DID is it is your own dedicated telephone number specific to a person. Um, a good example of this um, potentially could be a lawyer's office. We typically see these companies that publish a main telephone number uh, for potential clients to call into. Um, but once their case has been assigned to like a specific lawyer um, within that firm, um, they are able to provide them a direct number to contact them. So instead of having to sit through an auto attendant that says, you know, thank you for calling ABC Lawyer Firm. If you know your party's extension, you can dial it at any time. Um, for a dial by name directory, press two, so on and so forth. You can see how that could be um, painstakingly every time you need to talk to your lawyer about something. So, um, or if you have to go to the receptionist, she answers the call and transfers it, all that kind of good stuff. Having that direct dial number um, to an individual person is a big benefit and a big perk of putting a PRI service in over like a traditional pot line or something like that. So there's some other pros that we're going to see um, when we talk about a PRI service. Um, the big one is quality of service is guaranteed. And the reason that the quality of service is guaranteed is because it has its own dedicated circuit for that service to be delivered to, right? So it's not running another application on it or it's using, um, you know, uh, internet or it, different applications and those kind of things. It's only dedicated just for that voice service coming to your business. The other benefit is, is it works with the older telephone systems um, and specifically older telephone systems that can't support, you know, voice over IP or SIP trunking yet. Um, maybe that older legacy equipment just can't support it. Um, so PRIs are a great alternative um, to take advantage of some of those features that Subtrunking has, um, but still deliver it on a PRI service. So a couple cons, it's typically more expensive than Subtrunking, right? It usually has a pretty decent cost associated with it. Um, you know, connections are physical. So, and what I mean by that is there's a physical connection coming in for new lines that have to be installed into the business, right? As the company grows, for instance, let's say, I don't know, we're, we're starting to hit busy signals on our 23 paths that we have in our PRI circuit that comes in, right? So those 23 circuits, just think of those, it's kind of like highway paths that come into the business. So as a call comes in, it gets answered, it goes to another person, so on and so forth. But when that call frees up, it, it allows for another person to call in. But let's say we're maxing that 23 channels that we have and we added five new um, salespeople, right? And we need to have more telephone lines now coming in. Well, we not only have to buy another 23 channels for them. So let's just say a PRI cost us, I don't know, 400 bucks a month, right? And so just for those couple of people that I needed to add, I had to add another $400 service a month to our business to support it. So those things can be costly. Um, as you begin to grow your business and things get past a certain threshold, you've got to continue to add in 23 blocks instead of adding them as like individual um, paths in and out of your business. Okay, and this also requires us to have an in-house in IT staff to maintain and service some of these things because there is that physical connection there. So, you know, does it have power? Is it backed up? All of those kind of things. So we have to make sure that we support that from a physical perspective. The next solution we're going to talk about um, is kind of the new kid on the block, which is called SIP trunking, right? So the first thing to understand about SIP trunking and really what does SIP stand for? SIP stands for Session Initiation Protocol, right? SIP is the basis of SIP trunking. It is a standard communication protocol for voice and video communications in a unified communications across the data network. Um, SIP trunking eliminates the physical connection to the phone company, so there's no more hardware that's needed on site, there's no wiring, there's no circuit boxes, um, or anything to maintain for us to connect to the public switch telephone network, right? So those, those things that are in our office and in the back rooms and those kind of things, those all go away. Um, and what, at the end of the day, SIP trunking is riding over your existing internet connection. Um, so you know, it's coming over that data pipe. So there's no reason to have that physical connection that we need anymore. Um, so, but reducing multiple lines into a single point of entry drastically reduces charges for incoming lines and IT costs associated with maintaining those lines. So let's talk a little bit about 
where do we see SIP trunking and how is it beneficial and where do we see it in, in, in the modern telephone system, for instance. So the first one we're going to talk about is going to be a cloud phone system, right? So in a cloud phone system deployment, there's no phone system hardware being deployed on site. Right? So think about it this way in a cloud system. So traditionally, you have a premise-based phone system. It sits in your back room in your server rack or whatever the case may be. That box is physically going away now, and essentially that service is now being spun up in a big data center. Right? So that's the cloud. And for instance, TechMode uses Amazon Web Services for all of our hosting for our cloud services. So when we take that telephone system, we spin up a virtual server for you guys in our AWS instance, and we also bring the SIP trunks into it. So once again, we don't need to have that physical connection into your building anymore, so we're able to take those SIP trunks, um, deploy them right in a server, and be able to have all of that infrastructure in place for you. And as a consumer, all you need at the end of the day is just the access to, you know, to the Internet to register your telephone for your desk and to register the different applications that you will be using. So this greatly reduces the reliance on the old copper infrastructure and allows for many new features to be enabled simply and easily for your end users. So things such as like, you know, video conferencing, chat, mobile applications, all of those new things that we're starting to see in the marketplace are now available in those cloud solutions. And the reason that they're being able to be available to them is because we don't need that physical infrastructure anymore to support those things. As long as we can get to the internet, we can connect to that server, we can have all the core features that we need. So it eliminates things like VPNs and all types of other stuff that would be required um, to support some of those people. All right, so the second one, um, is going to be a premise-based phone system. And trust me, there are a ton of those out there. They still exist. Um, we still support them and sell them today. Um, so, you know, that physical system that is on site, so if you have a new system that can support SIP trunking, um, it is definitely something worth looking into. Um, in this scenario, SIP trunking would connect to the phone system via your Internet connection. Um, so same kind of thing, but you're going to have a physical connection in the site. And if you're going to be doing that, um, you know, we recommend that you look at purchasing what's called a session border controller, um, short as an SBC, um, but think of an SBC as a firewall for your SIP trunking. Um, since it uses the internet lines, um, you know, it's still open to hacking and toll fraud. So um, the easy way to think about it is in your business, you're going to have a firewall, right? That protects your data and protects people from getting in. So when we're using this over an internet connection, we need to do the same thing for our SIP trunks. So that's what a session border controller does. It protects our information from not being able to be accessed by other people that we don't want it to do. Okay? So um, those are a couple common uses that we see this for. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the pros of SIP con uh, trunking. And we talked a little bit about this, but um, usually it's more cost effective for a business, right? The, the dollars just make sense. Um, you know, SIP trunks range anywhere from $14.99 to $19.99 a month um, and can simply be delivered in single packets, right? You can order one, two, three, five, ten, whatever you want. Um, so the ability for you to scale quickly and to modify is another great thing about SIP trunking. So let's take, for instance, um, I don't know, let's talk about a seasonal company, right? So let's say we have a lawn company, and we are super busy in the summertime, and we need 30 talk paths to, to support all the traffic that's coming into our business, that people want to have their lawn sprayed and maintenance done and all that kind of good stuff. And in the wintertime, it gets really slow, and we only need 10. So the beauty about SIP trunking is you're able to throttle that up and down based on the needs and your seasons. So make sure when you're talking to your service provider to see if that's an option for you to move your SIP trunks up and down based on <clears throat> the time of year and, and what your seasonal business needs. Um, but it allows you to react to things that are happening right away and quickly. So if I needed to do that same thing on a PRI, I would have to wait for the telephone company to come out, install a new line into the building. That can take weeks. We can literally deploy a new SIP trunk in a couple hours. So those things... Um, are, are really beneficial for something like that. The next one we're going to talk about, another benefit and a big benefit, is um, you know, the ability to support um, telephone numbers anywhere in the country. So let me give you an example. I have an office in Detroit. It uses a 313 area code. And I want to hire a couple new people out in Los Angeles. 
and this is going to be my new market. So what we're going to do is we're going to give them a couple phones. We're not going to put a phone system out there. We're not going to do a whole, you know, building and all of that kind of good stuff. But I want to be able to give those people local telephone numbers, right? So, you know, with a PRI service, it, it's local to you, right, to where you're at. So you couldn't get like a 313 or a, 213 or a 213 number or something like that. You would actually have to buy a whole new service out there. With SIP trunking, we can actually order you telephone numbers across the country, right? So if you wanted to open an office in L.A. and you needed a 310 area code, absolutely we could do that um, because it doesn't require that physical circuitry on site, okay? Um, the last thing, of, uh, you know, is positive for E9, um, for SIP trunking is E911. So what we have found is, um, you know, 911 services have been around for a long time, right? You dial 911, they know your telephone number and your physical address of where you're calling from. But what E911 is, is actually the ability to give you a second layer of code to the 911 dispatch center. So this is becoming laws in a lot of states. So depending where you are, you may need to actually look into this for your phone system. So with E911, let's say, for instance, I have a campus environment and uh, I call 911 from, I don't know, let's say a, a building A in the campus. And so when I dial that phone number, the dispatch is going to see the physical address of the location, but it's also going to see that it's in building A and this person is in the southeast corner of the building. So at the end of the day, that allows those people, you know, their emergency responders to come to their much quicker um, and more efficiently to save lives, right? So E911 is a great thing, and that's what SIP trunking brings to the table um, to allow you to do those kind of things. So based on where you live and where your state is, um, there may already be laws on the books that require you to do this. Um, so definitely something worth talking about. Um, and, of course, you can consult with me, and I can have, you know, further conversation with you on it. The other one you're going to run into is a few cons, right? So SIP trunking can't just be the greatest thing ever, so there's got to be a few drawbacks for it. So the first thing is quality of service is not guaranteed. As Internet connections introduce lag and delay if they're not configured properly, okay? And also you can run into issues with insufficient bandwidth, right? So what we're seeing from a lot of organizations, they are getting rid of their PRIs or their pop lines and those kind of things, and they're moving to SIP trunking, but they are actually deploying two different internet paths or three or four internet paths in the business, the size, you know, depending on the size of the organization. But think about you have two internet paths coming in, one from a cable company, one uh, maybe you're getting fiber from another company, and we are able to dedicate which path goes out for our voice traffic. So it really is going to uh, you know, prevent those things that we find, or maybe you lose one service and then things automatically switch over. And there's a whole product called SD-WAN that we have a whole different kind of conversation to have about that. But, you know, for today, just think about, you know, internet is important because that is what your, um, your SIP trunks are running over. So making sure you have enough bandwidth is a very important thing. Um, the other thing is, is it does not natively work on older analog or digital phone systems. Right, So a lot of times you'll run into, well, you just can't do SIP trunking because your system doesn't support it, and maybe it's going to cost you a ton of money to upgrade it. Well, you know what? That's a great time to start looking at a hosted phone system that can eliminate those costs and use that money that we're spending today to create an ROI for the new telephone system that you're looking to purchase. All right? So hopefully that was helpful for you so you understand kind of the differences between the different circuits that are out there. Um, but one last thing I wanted to do is I wanted to just do a small comparison chart for you guys to kind of run through the differences, right? So, um, you know, add one line at one time. So with pop lines, you can do that, right? You can add line one, line two. I, hey, I need another one. I can add it. PRI, like we talked about, you can't. you got to add a whole new circuit of those 23 channels. Um, SIP trunking, absolutely, right? You can add single uh, pass any time that you want and do those. You know, um, DIDs, so direct inward dial numbers, right? So no, we can't do those on analog, so we can't have that own specific number for people. Um, but for PRIs and SIP trunking, absolutely we can. All right? Um, dedicated bandwidth requires guaranteed voice quality. Um, once again, these ones are dedicated circuits, so they're going to have that. With SIP trunking, we need to do those things that we talked about, right? Multiple internet pass or making sure it's configured properly and we have enough bandwidth to support it. Um, DIDs delivered outside of the physical location area code, like we talked about before, SIP trunking. Absolutely, we can do that. So that's a big advantage of that one. 
um, and then call out of the main telephone number. So with the older analog pot signs, you know, maybe you get lucky and you have line one available to you, but most time it's usually busy, right? So you're just grabbing the next line. So people don't get that main phone number um, from you all the time. They'll get like a, you know, a, a different offshoot number that you have. But with a PRI and with SIP trunking and using a modern phone system, you can absolutely push out your main telephone number for that. Or you can even do specific to push out maybe your own personal DID number that you have. So there's a lot of flexibility with those modern phone systems that will allow you to do those things, but you have to have the right circuitry in place in order to make that work. Okay, so the last thing that we're going to talk about here is how do all these pieces fit together, right? So what service is right for you? There are three factors to consider when doing this. So the first one is, is what, what services are available based on your physical address, right? So not every location may have the ability for fast internet, right? So maybe SIP trunking is not an option for us. Maybe there's only the copper infrastructure. So maybe that's something that we have to take into consideration. Um, but the nice thing is um, us here at Tech Mode, we're able to take a look at those, tell you what services are available in that location and help that better serve you for those things, okay? And then the next one's gonna be what type of telephone equipment do you have? Right, so if I have different types of telephone equipment and um, you know, can it support a PRI? Can it support something else? Um, you know, those are things that we're gonna need to check and see if that's something that we can do. And finally, and probably the most important one, um, is what are your business needs, right? We've seen a lot of changes recently with the whole COVID outbreak and people needing to work from home and, you know, all of those kind of case of an event of another lockdown or just your general plan of how you're going to support customers if I have to work remote or I have to do something different. So those things are very important um, for us to understand. So, um, you know, the beautiful thing about a hosted solution is it allows you to work from any, anywhere. You just need an um, internet connection. So, you know, some great things to start looking about um, for something like that. And then finally, I wanted to just, uh, tell you about a couple promos that we are currently running. So Tech Mode currently is offering 90 days free of our Tech Mode Go Flexible Cloud hosted solution. So these are available um, to new customers, but it has things in there from instant messaging to presence to video conferencing to uh, document sharing to, you know, doing a webinar like we're doing today. Those things are built into the solution. It all comes with a bunch of different useful things for your organization at a small monthly cost for it. And the other thing I wanted to note to you is we also have the availability um, to deliver SIP trunking. So Tech Mode is actually a service provider. Uh, we do provide SIP trunking. Um, for our customers, but we also offer SIP trunking with a PRI interface. So maybe you have one of those older legacy equipment out there that can't support SIP trunking. Well, we have a pretty cool um, niche product that allows us to deliver it to you as a PRI, but give you all of those cool feature functionalities of SIP trunking. So if you have more interest in that, uh, feel free to reach out to me. We're happy to discuss that more with you and kind of how that will work for your business. Okay. The final thing is, is we have a lot of integrations um, into our platform. So maybe you're using O365 or Salesforce or, you know, some kind of CRM. And, you know, people call into your organization and they say, um, you know, it, I get a screen pop that says, oh, hey, it's Mr. Smith. Oh, hi, Mr. Smith. How are you doing today? It would actually pop up my Salesforce and I would be able to see who is calling. And so we have a lot of integrations natively um, and for no additional cost um, with our hosted platforms. Okay. And the last thing I wanted to leave everybody with is we are giving away a $100 Amazon gift card. So all those folks that stuck to the end of this webinar will be put in a raffle and we will be sending out an email on Monday letting you know who the winner of that $100 gift card was. So with that, thank you so much everybody for your time today. I hope it was beneficial for you and you understand um, a little bit more about how all of the different circuitries work together and how they work with a modern telephone system. But if you have any additional questions, need anything more, uh, my contact information is here, so feel free to reach out to me. Other than that, thank you so much for joining our webinar today, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.